Okay, welcome back. Uh, so the project that we are doing today was our standard offset with 45 welded elbows. Uh, over here on the board, you can see that we went and did our measurements. We took the measurements to the board, did all our math to come up with our cuts. Then in the second part, we went over to our machine. We made our cuts and our threads. And now we are at the assembly stage, okay? So I've set up my tripod to assist me with that. Uh, it is a rigid uh, standard tripod with a chain vise on it that's gonna lock down the pipe. So as we are tightening up, because now our fittings that we said were three to five by hand, then we wanna get one to two turns with a pipe wrench, okay? That's gonna allow the proper thread engagement on our tapered threads. At this point, uh, you will be doing some kind of a sealant on your threads. We always seal our threads, whether it be uh, pipe dope pi uh, or Teflon tape. Teflon tape or anything or a paste. Okay, here at Tulsa, we don't do that simply because we reuse our fittings. And if we were to do that, then it would just mess up all our threads and we wouldn't be able to reuse the fittings. Okay, but in our course, we do uh, let them know that that is the proper way to put your threads together is with some kind of thread sealant. Okay, so, you know, we do teach them, but we don't allow them to do that just simply because we reuse our fittings and that would prevent us from reusing them. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get our pipe set up into our chain vise and lock it down. All right, chain vise simply just goes over the top, give it a few cranks, snug it up, and now you can see our pipe's held solid in place. All right, so Mr. Brian now is going to go ahead and thread on the pipe and get it his uh, three to five by hand. Again, you'll have some kind of pipe uh, threading seal on there. All right. And you also want to make sure when we, uh, in our last video, when we cut, when we cut the threads, there's a lot of shavings going in a lot of places. The last thing you want is for foreign material entry inside your pipe to create shavings that are going to affect a hydraulic system and eat up a, a half million dollar winch. So you want to make sure that you clean out your piping system prior to installing this into the system in which it's going. All right, a good point. Cleanliness is key to everything. Whether you're welding, pipe fitting, threading, bending, it doesn't matter. All right, you do not want foreign material in your system, all right? So we broke out our uh, rigid 24-inch uh, pipe wrenches. That's what we're gonna need to fit on to uh, our fitting and get our proper tightening done. All right, I recommend the uh, aluminum ones, they're lightweight and do just as good a job as the steel ones do. Okay, so if you're hauling around a 24 inch steel uh, pipe wrench there, you're gonna know by the end of the day because it's gonna weigh on you a little bit. So this one does just as good and weighs half as much. Now we're looking, we're looking to at least get, you know, two to three turns out of this. And we can actually look at, at our threads. And when, when we have, you know, two to five threads on the outside, we know that we have sufficient thread engagement inside the actual fitting. But that's what we're looking to obtain. Okay, so putting the pipe wrench on, you always wanna use your weight to assist you. So I'm pushing down on the tripod. Notice that I'm not pulling up on it. If I was to take this and try to pull up on it, the odds are once it gets tight, I'm gonna pull my stand over. Okay, so you wanna use your body weight as leverage, slip it on here, and then just simply do it like a ratcheting type motion. You can see it almost it just grips by itself. And, I'm tight, and I can feel it tightening up as I go. Again, I'm watching the back side of my threads. I'm looking for two to three threads left outside. That way I know I'm pretty tight. All right, so as I go, I'm gonna get another quarter turn or so on this. I can feel it getting really tight. All right, I don't, now I don't wanna over tighten this. Okay, this is, you know, a uh, cast fitting that can crack. Okay, so you think, well, it's steel, I'm not gonna break it. But if you try to get on here and over tighten it, you will crack that fitting. Okay, again, then you have to screw it all off, toss out the fitting, go get another one. Okay, so now that I've got that tightened up where I want it to be. Perfect, five threads. Five threads are protruding this fitting. All right, so now while I got it in this position, I could take my A or my C, it doesn't matter because they're the same. All right. And we're just going to go ahead and get that thread started. All right, and I'm going to get it hand tight. Okay, so in this position right here, you can see that I would have to pull on it 
and we don't want to do that because we'll pull the stand over. So just simply, Mr. Brian, I'll hold that for a sec. I'm just simply going to loosen this up. I'm going to bring this over so that now I can get the downward leverage I need to work it and not worry about my tripod flipping over on me. So we'll go ahead and make adjustments to our pipe wrench so we get a nice little grip on here. And then I just simply start tightening her up. All right, and I'm looking at my thread engagement right here. You can get a better view from the last one. But right there, I'm tight, and I'm showing two to three threads. I'm happy with that, okay? So now we can just simply make an adjustment, take this side off, and we're just gonna flip the pipe around and do the same thing to the other side. All right, get her locked in. Wait, there we go. All right, we'll get our fitting on. And we're just going to repeat the process. Three by hand. All right, we'll get our wrench on. She's good and snug right there. Take my A or C pipe, whichever you want to call it. We're going to put it right in here with the same as the other side. And as you can see, now it's starting to take shape of what we had on our board drawn out and what we have to make. All right. So again, just put the wrench on, get her tight. While this is in place, we could take our angle finder and indicate that this angle and this angle are the same. If these two angles are the same, or if they're completely square, you have a little bubble here, you could actually take and, ro and rotate your piping assembly. And if your piping assembly is in the bubble here on leg A, we should be able to come back to leg C and also have the piping assembly inside this bubble. And that's how we know that we have a, a square piping assembly. Now, because this is threaded pipe, you do have a lot of wiggle room. As uh, Mr. John had stated previously, there's going to be pipe dope or uh, Teflon tape implemented into these threads, which is actually the sealing compound along with the taper. And it, you have a little bit of wiggle room to move it a few degrees one way or the other to ensure that you have a nice square uh, assembly. All right, so now that we've determined that we are 180 degrees out from each other with our fittings, now the next step would be to put the flanges on, okay? So we have what we call our slip-on flange, two inch, and it's designed to slide onto the pipe so that you can make adjustments to your, th uh, to your project. So. What I like to do is I like to bring it right out to the edge of the pipe, nice and flush, and make a little mark on the back side with my soapstone because we talked about how we had to slide this off quarter inch to a half inch so that we could weld inside. Well, now that I have a line indicating, I can go ahead and slide this out and take a measurement from my line to the back of my flange. And right now I'm sitting at approximately three eighths of an inch which is right in between my acceptance criteria. Quarter inch to a half inch, three eighths right in the middle. That's what I want to go with. And then my flange is on. Uh, you can uh, two hole this flange, okay, which uh, we could do on another video. It's a little time consuming. But since I have adjustment in my threads, then I can eyeball and get my two hole, what they call tools, that my bolt holes are lined up to the top and square to the fitting, okay? If my was rotated this way with a bolt hole to the top, that is one hold. All right, we, most places are two holds, so we're going to go ahead and square that up. And what we would do is have our welder go ahead and tack that on. All right, I'm not so concerned with the bolt holes lining up to my project because it's threaded. I can put a pipe wrench on and I can get another little half degree or so that I need to get the bolt holes to line up. Okay, so at this point of the assembly, We'll bring in a welder 
and he will tack this off. And then the next part is we'll put it in to see if it fits. And if, if, this, were not if this were not threaded, if these were weld welded uh, fittings, we, since these are slip on flanges, we would simply slide our, make our marks, slide our flanges here, put it in place. We would then two hole it, putting two, bolt, uh, two bolts through two of the holes. Then we would slide up and down our piping assembly to get our, our acceptance criteria and distance from this line to the face, and it could be tacked in place and then welded out. And you can see now that our flanges are on and tacked and we're ready to go ahead and do the assembly uh, on, in our project's space. So I wanted to show you real quick what, when we referred to on the board where we said our flange was a quarter inch to half inch back out. Uh, you can see now that the flanges are tacked on it. There is a uh, space right here where we pulled the pipe back a little bit and that's gonna get a quarter inch seal weld by your welder, okay? Or if you happen to be the combo guy in a welder, you'll weld it. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and move the tripod out of the way. And Mr. Hatch is gonna go ahead and get us into position. We have our bolts ready. At this point, you would go ahead and put in your gaskets. All right, now we have our piping assembly. It is tacked up, it is fitted up. In most applications, we would then apply our gar lock or rubber gasket, depending on what the spec calls for. Here at Tulsa Weld School, we don't necessarily do this because uh, we don't need gaskets, we're not looking for an actual seal. However, comma, in the field that would be applicable. Okay, so what Mr. Brian's doing now is, is what we call a dry fit. Okay, so he is gonna go ahead and drop two bolts in there. It's a four bolt system flange, but we're just gonna put in two and make sure that we are lined up and our flange engagement and our, our proper alignment, okay? Because what eventually what he's gonna do after that is the next step, once we have it bolted in and everything we're happy with the fit up, we'll pull it back out, turn it over to the welder because he's gonna have to weld out the flanges. Once the flanges are weld out, then we can put it back in for final assembly, put the proper uh, grade of bolts and nuts in there uh, by your blueprint and slide your gaskets in and then everything will be tightened up in accordance with the spec. And right now it looks like our dry fit is going very well. Everything fits as uh, we calculated it out to do. So one of the key points is that I want to emphasize is measurements are the key. Okay, without good measurements, none of this is going to work. Okay, so if you got to take your measurements three times, and I, I explain this to my students is, take them three times. If you get the same number twice, then that's probably a good safe number to go with. Because there's times that you're in a hurry, maybe you're a little stressed out, whatever, and you just looked at the tape measure wrong, okay? So a lot of mistakes that I see from my students when their assembly doesn't fit is we go back and realize that the measurements they took, they were off. And that's because they just did it one time and 29 and three quarters may look like, you know, 31 and three quarters. So here now they made a two inch mistake, okay? And it's never gonna fit with that kind of mistake. If you make a mistake of a 16th of an inch or an eighth of an inch, Odds are, yeah, it's probably gonna fit. But anything bigger than that, then that's where they run into problems. So again, emphasizing on the measurements. The math is the math, you could do it with a calculator. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. You could do it in your head. However, the math is no good without the proper measurements. So I can't emphasize that enough is measure two, measure three, measure four times until you're confident that you've got the right measurements that you're gonna plug into your equation. Well, Mr. Right. John looks like a good fit up. All right, so you can see now that we made our assembly. It fits perfect. You look down the line, everything is parallel and in line with each other. All right, if, there, if, there, if this was off a little bit, I could put a pipe wrench on there, give it a little snug. Okay, now it can bring me back in the line. Okay, so you saw when we did it in the tripod, I was not overly concerned with that I was dead on, zero, zero on my level. Because I know I have a slight little adjustment that I can make when I got it in place, all right? So at this point, what I would, my next step would be simply to talk to my welder, see if he wants to weld it here in place, or does he want me to put it back in a tripod? And I guarantee you a welder's gonna say, put it back in the tripod, just because it's easier, okay? He can make a better weld. We're not trying to pin them into a bad position or to make a bad weld, because the assembly and the final product is not just a single person evolution, okay? So pipe fitters, 
take care of your welders, welders take care of your pipe fitters, you make a great team, you're highly productive, uh, the boss likes it, and when raise time comes around, he's going, hey, John and Brian, great team, man, they do first time quality work, you know, I'm going to give them a 5% raise instead of a 2%, okay? So a lot of things factor in. Be proud of what you do, okay, take pride in it, have integrity in it, don't cheat it, don't try to, you know, skip steps. You can see that we did this in, uh, I guess, no more than probably an hour's time frame, give or take. I said, you know, that's just going from getting our job assignment, making our measurements, taking our measurements to the board, doing the math, finding our cuts to the machine, make the cuts, make the threads to the assembly, and dropping it in. Now we can turn it over to our welder to finish it out. And use caution in this step. This is the fit up step where we're doing a dry fit. But uh, you heard Mr. John say previously, after we get done with this, we're going to take it out. It's going to get uh, welded off completely. Then the gaskets will get cut. It will get put into place with appropriate fasteners. If these fasteners are not the fasteners that you're using for a permanent install, you don't want the inspector to come see them and write your company up for using inappropriate fasteners. So these here would actually be painted orange if they were not the fasteners that we were going to use indicating that they are not a permanent fixture and they are for targeting purposes only. All right, well, I want to thank everybody uh, for giving us a little bit of your time, time and attention today. Again, we did a uh, standard offset using 45 degree uh, threaded elbows. We uh, quickly went over the math and how to do the uh, calculations. We showed you the machine that uh, does it and uh, take care of the machines that take care of you, treat them with respect. Uh, if you have to do that and thread it by hand, you, uh, you'll really appreciate having that machine. All right, so uh, in closing, uh, on behalf of Mr. Brian Hatch and Tulsa Welding School, Jacksonville, I'd like to thank everybody and uh, come back and uh, see more of our videos in the future. Thank you for watching our video today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something today. If you would like to get some more tips and tricks and become a better welder, then subscribe to our channel. And if you would like to learn even more right now, then click on our link. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.